technical difficulties. And welcome back. I have Kimberly Van Ray. She is a registered nurse and a recovery expert. Kimberly and I have worked together in the past, and if you all know or don't know, registered nurses and uh, the medical professionals are, have a special place in my heart. Not, not just because I am one of those individuals, a nurse, medical professional, worked in medicine for 25 years, but because of the job itself, it requires and demands so much of you. And you have to take your job in that particular instance very seriously because people are reaching out to you and uh, it's your responsibility uh, to take care of them and be there for them in their moment. And so Kimberly has worked in medicine for 25 years, emergency medicine, recovery, uh, addiction and rehab, inpatient and transitional care, uh, living as well. And she is um, a prime example of giving of herself. She lives that uh, every day in her real life as well. She is a dedicated mother, spouse, um, and she is a prime example of who you would want to be caring for you in your time of need. I'm so grateful to have Kimberly on the show. When I asked her to be on the show, she was like, absolutely, you say when, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, you just have to know that you feel her before she even speaks. And... Um, She's so dedicated and real. And we are going to get to know Kimberly Van Ray today. Kimberly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Nancy. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. So tell us, uh, you're a nurse, um, bachelor's, mm -hmm. and please? Yeah, so I started as a CNA, and then I um, went into the Army got, um, as a medic, and then got my nursing in the Army got out in the civilian sector and um, work as an RN. So uh, over 20, 20, over 25 years in the nursing profession. Yeah. Wow, that's so, great. Would you change anything? Uh, no, you know, I, I, w I know this sounds crazy, but I almost wish that I had started an addiction way sooner. And um, I guess I had to go down my path to be you know where I am today but yes I, I I love the the disease of addiction is the only disease you can suffer from and that in a program of recovery you are exponentially a better person um, than you ever were prior to a, a acquiring the disease and this can't comes from um, the Betty Ford clinic the doctor that treated Betty Ford and he was he didn't suffer from addiction but he he said that this is why he treats a addiction in this is why his, it's his specialty because it's the only disease you can suffer from and become an exponentially better person in, in recovery. You can't say it about heart disease, you can't say it about diabetes, you can't say it about cancer. So it's so rewarding. So over overcoming addiction can make mm -hmm. you exponentially a better person. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. really wonderful. Work in, you know, working a program of recovery. Well, who has been instrumental in your life in terms of mentors and the path that you chose? Um, you know, my mom, for sure. It was just, she's just always been a really loving, caring individual. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I, I found a lot of nurses in the Army that I thought, oh my gosh, I want to be like you. And then, you know, getting out and, and you just find these um, nurses in your profession and you think, you know, see one, do one, teach one, you know, and you just, you watch them and you think, oh my gosh, I, I want to, I want to be a nurse like you. I want to practice like you. I want to be caring and empathetic like you. And you just emulate those people. That's very mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And then tell me um, other individuals that are instrumental in your life that have, mm -hmm. um, you know, made you and who you are today as well. I think my children every day. You know, you they teach you they they teach you to remember to um, to imagine and play and I think we forget that they say that a child laughs over two hundred times a day while a adult only twenty 
you know, so they, they teach us to remember to laugh and have fun and create and imagine and, you know, be authentic and, you know, it's okay to not be perfect. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Living in the moment, not taking yourself too seriously as mm -hmm. well. And you're right, I do believe that as we become adults, and it could be related to a lot of the responsibilities that we have, but still, um, not taking yourself too seriously and learning how to have fun is really important for many different reasons. Yeah, they f we forget to have fun and we forget that, we teach our children all the time, I think that um, you can be anything you wanna be. You can do anything you wanna do. And then at some point we put ourselves in a box and we, we stop believing that about ourselves as adults. And you know, when did that stop being true? When, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying. You know, so keep growing, keep keep living, keep learning. That's good. That's really great advice as well. And so, tell me some of pitfalls and lessons learned in life that has made you a better person. Wow. So, um, I think addiction for me I, is near and dear. I. I didn't understand the disease, and over 20 years in nursing, I didn't get, I didn't understand it until it came from my soul. And um, at age 40, I found myself in trouble with alcohol and struggling with it. And I, um, I, I I'm telling you, I, I I looked for help in in avenues that I thought were, you know, the appropriate avenues, and and I couldn't find healthcare providers that understood this disease and um, when I finally did I was like oh my gosh yes and you know then I was all about bringing awareness to it and you know getting through the you know what the chemical dependency of it is and then you know finding out that it isn't our problem it's our poor solution and then it, it's a it's a problem born of our solution you know and then you know we're dealing with not just all of our problems that led us to the addiction, but also the, you know, the chemical dependency of the addiction as well. And so once we get through the dependency and, you know, cleaning that part up, we still have all those problems. And so we have to li learn to live life on life's terms. That totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you uh, get help that you needed? Um, how did you seek that out? <sighs> Well, I had been to the hospital several times in the thralls of, you know, being, you know, in the addiction. And um, I ended up in the hospital the last time, and I was withdrawing from the alcohol. And I um, remember the doctor coming in the room, and I had been, while I was in the hospital, my IV got infected, and I um, went completely septic, and my kidneys start to shut down. Mm. And um, when I finally came to two surgeries two and a half weeks later, when I started to finally understand what was going on, um, the doctor came in my room and she said, my lab values. And I, and I looked at her and I said, I'm in renal failure? And she said, you tried to kill yourself, you drank poison. And when she said that to me, I panicked because all I could think was, I didn't try to kill myself. I'm trying to live and I don't know how. And I don't know where this voice came from, but um, I looked at her and I said, you are not the doctor for me, get out of my room. And, um, and I just sat back and I just started to pray that they'd send someone who understood this disease, you know? And so a doctor walks in and, um, you know, smiles. This is the first smile I saw in the hospital for two weeks. And, I, you know, he says, I, you know, I think you're gonna be okay. And he walks out of the room and he sends a case manager who had 14 years in recovery into my room. And she hands me a little blue book, um, the Alcoholics Anonymous, and um, gave me a list of, of uh, meetings and support groups in the area and just said, you know, I have 14 years in recovery and there's hope for you too. And Okay. Yeah. So that's humanizing the experience mm -hmm. and actually having relevance to it as well. Um, I know that drinking poison, it was a cry for help, oh, uh, and mm -hmm. it was rubbing alcohol, yeah. but, mm -hmm. um, but a cry for help, and you know, you asked for it. Mm 
Yeah. And it's crazy to explain that to someone who doesn't understand um, and doesn't understand the compulsion that comes with the addiction. And that it, I, I couldn't explain it to someone uh, you know, that, that hadn't gone through it well enough to really comprehend it. And so when you, know, you walk into the rooms of AA and you walk into a program of recovery, everyone understands. You know, and I, you know, I say this um, quite often in my field of study. I say, you know, those who judge will never completely understand, and those that completely understand will never judge. Mm -hmm. That's a really great um, relevancy, mm -hmm. and uh, the road to recovery yes. uh, is every day. Every day, 24 hours at a time. Mm -hmm. And you are doing it. Mm -hmm. So proud of you. And not only just doing it, mm -hmm. you're helping others. You have an organization, yes, and it's called uh, Soul Addiction Recovery, mm -hmm. and Soul stands for showing others unconditional love in recovery, mm -hmm. and it's through mind, body, and spirit um, that you know you get a breakthrough, right? Yeah. It's through your trials uh, that there's a silver lining, um, and. Um, what you say is addiction is a poor solution, mm -hmm. uh, you know, rather it's a drug or a, a substance, um, and it's not the actual problem. And with your organization, you help others that have this problem mm -hmm. in so many different ways. Yes, it's, it's teaching you to love yourself, you know, and you know, you cannot give a, the program teaches you, you can't give away what you don't have. And you know, when I, when I hit rock bottom, I was, spiritually bankrupt I was emotionally bankrupt and I was physically bankrupt and I had nothing to give and so you know in a program of recovery you're surrounded by people who are filling your cup and teaching you how to love yourself and you know and loving you until you can love yourself you know until you have something to give and that's what my programs are that's what my organization is all about so you help others mm -hmm. um, and and then you also um, have employment and, mm -hmm. and you work in a recovery. Yep. Facility. Shout out to Soul Surgery. Those are my peeps over at Soul Surgery. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, how does individuals get in touch with your services and how do you um, acquire your presence and what you do? They can go to my website as uh, souladdictionrecovery.com. Tells a little bit about my story and my services that I that I provide and um, just. Um, my my story tells you know of a, a a story of understanding you know and that you know that the goal isn't to get clean and sober the goal is to love your life mm -hmm. enough not to have to use or drink that's amazing mm -hmm. now some of the services that you offer are completely adjunctive to mm -hmm. individuals that have had um, stents of inpatient treatment mm -hmm. and residential as well and and so now they're discharged. Mm -hmm. um, they may want um, continued consultations, right? Yes. And you provide a variety mm -hmm. of those types of services. So I offer services even to the family, to the, when, if, if you want an intervention, that sort of thing. Um, I also will get them to a program if you need, you know, help finding a a program that for your insurance or for mm -hmm. for whatever you know fits into you know your life at that time or what's the best program for you and what your trauma is um, also I will meet you after recovery after a detox or a residential treatment program and help you get on the path of the mind body spirit um, getting physically and emotionally and spiritually back in fit well this is simply incredible um, so this is Kimberly Van Ray, everyone, who is, um, her journey was addiction later in life and has dedicated her life to helping others like her. It's an everyday process. And she can personally help those that are struggling and or need encouraging um, coaching processes and or companion uh, through um, your journey. Um, it's not every day that you can find the help that you need here so close to individuals 
in the greater Phoenix area as well. Uh, and for those that are listening in other states and internationally, there are programs that are available. You just have to do a little bit of research, but I do want to let you know that with Kim's story, everyone has a story. And her way of giving back is selfless. Mm -hmm. uh, she offers um, programs at uh, her uh, organization that will help you and your family get through this together. It's all about unity and seeing the greatness within you and you being fulfilled and happy enough to not pick up that substance. That's amazing, Kim. Mm -hmm. So you. amazing. Yeah, it's not me, all him. <laughs> Well, again, it definitely aligns with what we do here at Dr. Nancy Knows Radio Talk Show. You know, your journey, everyone's journey is different. And believing in a, in a higher calling and being uh, called faith and deliverance, you too can do all that you need to do and purposed for, for individuals that are waiting for you to just walk in your destiny and your journey. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it does require that you believe in yourself enough to know that you can because there are individuals that are critical to your success that will meet you along your way. Really appreciate everything that you're doing in the community, Kim. Mm -hmm. um, so amazing. And then on the side of employment, not only are you connecting with those that need help every day, families, um, you know, your colleagues at Soul Search. Soul Surgery. Mm -hmm. Soul Surgery. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what you do there and, and the team, the, the amazing team that oh you have. Oh, my goodness. Was the, I've never worked with a group that was so dedicated to um, to recovery. An un unbelievable soul surgery, that, that whole team. The um, I'm the residential treatment nurse, so there's two residential treatment centers. There's one in... Um, uh, Pinnacle Peak area and then there's one in Phoenix and then they have their detox which is in Scottsdale and then the um, clinic which is in Scottsdale as well and then they have several sober living houses and um, IOP houses so it's an amazing outfit and just um, the owners in recovery uh, even the ones that aren't in recovery there's very few probably 90 percent of the staff is in recovery and understands and um, the therapists, oh, incredible. I mean, just hearts of gold. You know, selfless service of, among every single person in that, that whole organization is just amazing. So everyone, you need to love what you do for our young audiences. When you choose a career path, you have to love it to be the best at it, at what you do. And Kim, I do want to ask you, have you noticed um, an increase in your senses and outreach to your services because of the current state of affairs that we are in? Absolutely. You know, the human condition we talked to earlier is, is all about connection. And then here we are in this pandemic where we're social distancing, we're isolating, and um, th that's not what we were meant to do. And so the loneliness, the depression that comes with all of that, the mental health issues that come with that, again, go hand in hand with the disease, the disease of addiction, excuse me. And, um, <clears throat> you know, we're trying, when we, when we drink and we use, we're trying to numb feelings. You know, we can't selectively numb. You can't just numb depression and, and sadness and, um, pain and anger you you know you're also numbing joy and happiness and connection and love and so you know it's it's difficult but I've seen an incredible increase in in people who are suffering or people who relapse in this trying time you know so probably even new individuals as well exactly um, the loss of job and family members um, the economic status has been greatly impacted on COVID and, and just coming off the season this time of year, actually, suicide is really at its height uh, this month, actually. Yes. And we don't understand what it's, it's doing to, you know, us as a whole, even our children, even, you know, you don't, 
we're not meant to be separated, not playing with other little kids, not at, at the park, not going out, not participating in sports and activities that, you know, all are great stress relievers. And um, it's just, it's interesting time. And, you know, there's a, I think that, you know, we're working really hard to acclimate to this and, um, and still do it in a healthy fashion. So, Well, what are some of the telltale signs that you um, would say in your professional opinion that would, um, you know, clue in to someone maybe having an addiction that's worsening or um, not mm -hmm. really great? Um, for, for me, it was, you know, having to have a drink to get right or to get straight or to um, a, one or two wasn't enough or you, you know, just even just physical signs, you know, of malnutrition and just um, the feeling that I need a drink. It's not, you know, I want to drink or you're drinking more than a couple a night or you're drinking more or you're using drugs or things to, you know, that are illegal, illegal substances and trying to feel something other than what you're feeling. You have to start questioning yourself, okay, do I have a problem? Why am I doing this? What are my motives behind what I'm doing? Is it hard for people to seek help? Oh, absolutely. You're you're shackled by shame. Oh my goodness, you know, you you someone will find out I have a problem. You know, I I can attest to that. I I was definitely that person who I didn't want anyone to know that I was struggling. I didn't want anyone to know that I had these problems. I didn't want anyone to judge or to see me as anything but you know, amazing, you know, and uh, that's, I don't think that's abnormal. I don't think that's, I think that we all feel that way. We want to be loved, accepted, you know, and, and seen and respected. Absolutely. I know that taking the first step is often the hardest, but once um, you do and you're in, um, in good hands in terms of a treatment facility is always the first step and calling someone or a family member is really awesome. We are out of time for this one segment, but we will be back with more from Kimberly Van Ray, the recovery expert. We'll be right back. You don't want to miss what's coming up next because Dr. Nancy knows. We'll be back in a few minutes. Hello, I'm your celebrity medical doctor, and this is Dr. Nancy Knows Radio Talk Show. We are looking for expert guests in their field of industry to include, but not limited to, finances, senior living, real estate, hospitality, entertainment, nonprofit. If this sounds like you, we want to hear from you. You can reach us at drnancynose.com and fill out the form to be considered. Remember, it's not only what Dr. Nancy knows, but it's who she knows. Hi, I'm Dr. Nancy. Welcome to our clinics. We believe that personalized care and relationship building are the basis of improving health outcomes. At Dr. Nancy's Integrative Medicine, you gain health care providers who take the time to understand your health goals and find solutions. We offer optional medical memberships, giving you peace of mind and quality care. We provide both medical and aesthetic services in two Arizona locations. We practice the highest standards of patient care. We respect patients' rights. We safeguard patient competencies. We treat patients with compassion. You are invited to call the office to schedule an appointment or online at a time that is convenient for you. Call to schedule 480-669-6452 or visit our website at drnancysintegrativemedicine.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Nancy of Dr. Nancy's Integrative Medicine. I'd like to tell you about a service that I offer, Profit Laser Lipo. Did you know that you could lose up to two inches in 20 minutes, no downtime, pain, or surgery? Eight sessions are recommended for maximum results. Call today, 480-669-6452, or schedule online at drnancysintegrativemedicine.com. You're listening to Dr. Nancy Knows Radio Talk Show. Ask your questions now. Dr. Nancy is listening. 
We are back with Kimberly Van Ray, recovery expert registered nurse, and we are just going to pick up where we left off um, with regard to addiction, bringing more awareness to this disease, and uh, how shameful it is for individuals, they, they feel this way, uh, to seek help. And Kim is going to talk to us about when individuals, um, when, when do they know when to seek help, and, and what are those steps? What does that process look like? Well, it's first um, understanding that your life is unmanageable. You know, if the, when you drink, your life is unmanageable. W drink or use, whatever that a substance is. And if you, if your life becomes unmanageable, you know, you break out in handcuffs every time, you know, you drink or use drugs, then you're, you're probably having a manageable life. Or, you're, you know, you're just drinking too much and it's affecting your life and you're not productive. And, you know, it, it, the only requirement it for membership is a desire to stop drinking, you know, or to stop using. So it's just about, you know, understanding that you don't want to live this sort of life anymore and that it's you're just sick and tired of being sick and tired. All right. So then they uh, go into an individual go into maybe the ER to sober up and or to recover and mm -hmm. then um, consultation actually yeah. can sometimes uh, take place in the hospital setting to decide uh, inpatient versus outpatient treatment and and um, an individual will choose or that process and, and then what happens? Well, you know, I, you usually look into whatever insurance you have and then what where you can go and then call that recovery center and I, I know for soul surgery, we take it from there. There is no other, there's no more thinking. We understand that your life is unmanageable. And so we are going to take care of it from, you know, start to finish from for there. But, you know, in, and as my company, Soul Addiction Recovery, same thing. Like, I'm going to figure out what, where you can go, what in, what your insurance will accept, or, you know, if you have insurance, how to get insurance, all of those things and then how to get into a treatment um, facility that fits your needs. Well, that's really great information because there may be individuals that are thinking, okay, I have this problem, now what? How do I get the help that I need? Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that information as well. Or to even just go to a meeting, find a local meeting house, and go to an AA meeting and say, does any of this apply to me? You know, That's great information. That's really wonderful. Now listen, congratulations are in order, I do believe, Kimberly. You, I want to congratulate you, won first place at OCB uh, Master's Division Bikini. Tell us about that. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so I, I started exercising and working out. That was part of my body, mind, of the mind, body, and spirit, and um, you know, started lifting and really liked it. And uh, I had a couple girlfriends who had competed before, and one of my girlfriends said, you know, you really could compete and win. And so I, I committed to it, and I, you know, did the work and followed through, and I took first place in the master's division, amateur bodybuilding uh, bikini division. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. Now that's dedication and t determination, mm -hmm. right? And I believe that when an individual makes their mind up, it's mind over matter, by the way. Um, mindset is everything. And when you decide, when an individual decides to do something, they can do anything. It's limitless. Yes. Yeah, and it's crazy because the program of recovery actually helped me intensely with, you know, my, my body part, the, you know, the working out and the, the bodybuilding. Because, I, you know, I believe that life is like a gym membership with a really complicated cancellation policy and you know so we are f forced through trials and things that are heavy and we lift heavy things you know and so it, weightlifting is lifting heavy things and becoming stronger you know and, and embracing the the suck the the um the pain and being uncomfortable and staying uncomfortable for a little bit and and building muscle that way well, um, supplementation, overall health and well-being, not just mentally but physically and spiritually, mm -hmm. uh, is all important for balance. Yes. And I believe that it's really important for an individual that wants to make a difference 
um, they need to make a difference for themselves first and love who they are and the skin that they're in. Uh, and when that happens, people see who you are and you have so much more to offer and give back when you love yourself. Absolutely. You cannot give away what you do not have. And That's so in order to love someone completely, you have to love yourself. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, I am um, super grateful to have you on the show to talk about the disease uh, addiction. And I hope that all of you, my vis viewers and listeners, have gotten some great information from what Kimberly shared with us today. And um, she is available to help uh, all that need her services. And Kimberly, how do we reach out to you uh, if we have concerns and uh, want to know more about what it is that you offer? So um, my website, obviously, at souladdictionrecovery.com, and you can contact me through that. Um, you sh shoot me off an email at, at um, my at, through my website. Um, if you're looking to get into a recovery center, you can shout out to Soul, um, Soul Surgery. Um, Brian, uh, my um, business development people out in at Soul Surgery will take care of everything you need there or direct you in the, d in the direction you need to go. But yes, definitely my website, souladdictionrecovery.com. Very good. Mm -hmm. And the message really here is you're not alone. No, no, you are not alone. You're not alone. There are people that care about you as well uh, until you can start caring about yourself. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the wonderful thing about um, the human race and individuals that uh, are in um, fields of uh, the industry that they're experts in because they have a passion and, uh, to love and care and give back in that same, in that same fashion. And so, yes, you are not alone. Yeah, and I this, I think when you get when you hit rock bottom and you go through what what I've been through, you know, it's this great honor of just living life, you know. But with great honor comes great responsibility. So you know, you have to be reaching back and helping the next one in line. That's exactly right. So we call that a hand up, right? Mm -hmm. Not a handout, but a hand up, mm -hmm. and giving people hope and humanizing uh, the experiences uh, and letting you know uh, that it takes all of us together as a one unit um, to change the world. Starting with one though, it, it can really just start with one. So be the change you wish to see in the world. So we really thank you for being a part of the show, uh, Kimberly. And listen guys, our segment, um, Boost Your Awareness, thereby increasing your health and wealth is a segment that we talk about helpful tips on um, health and wealth. And so with this segment, we're gonna keep Kimberly around to talk about some of those um, tips on the health side of things, Kim. Um, what do you have to say in terms of just overall health and well-being? And not necessarily always related to the medical profession, right? You know, you know, inspirational words of wisdom and motivation um, in increases those endorphins, so it makes you feel good about yourself. So that's an overall health and well tip. What yes. tips do you have for us today? Well, you know, one of the greatest um, things that my trainer said to me when I was training for the show was, you know, she asked, she never called it a diet. She always called it an eating plan. She said, how's your eating plan going? And, you know, when we first started, I said, well, I cheated. She said, I don't like that word, define cheated. And I said, you know, I ate a handful of M&Ms. And she says, well, did you need those M&Ms? And I said, define need. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she said, well, sometimes your body just needs calories, doesn't care how it gets them. You know, so, you know, did you need them? And I said, no, I cheated. And she says, would you cheat on someone you love? And I said, no. She says, would you like it if someone you love cheated on you? And I said, no. And she said, then why are you cheating on yourself? And so, you know, I, I thought about that every time I picked up something that wasn't on plan or that, you know, I, did I, do I need this? You know, so that was really great advice. You know, do I really need this for, and how am I gonna feel after I eat it? 
you know what I mean, or w whatever. So it was, it was, you know, pretty deep, but but very helpful for me because then every time, you know, like I said, I pick something up, I'm like, do I need this? Is this good for my body? Is it feeding my body, my mind, my soul? That's a really awesome tip, and it's so timely because it's the beginning of the year, everyone. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're all trying to shut off some of those holiday pounds that we may have put on. And New Year's, uh, Valentine's Day is right around the corner as well. And, and so New Year is a new beginning. And what a great tip to just really get your mind right with whatever program that you decide is best for you. That's yes. really great, Kim. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. How about another tip? Okay. Um, get up and move. Move. Whatever you're doing, move. You know, I mean, you know, we, I, I use this little trick. It's five, four, three, two, one, and launch myself out of bed. You know, <laughs> because otherwise you'll say, no, you'll make a bunch of, of excuses in your, in your head of why you can't get up or it's so warm in your bed or whatever. But to get up and to actually do something, take care of yourself, you're going to feel better. So to get up and do some activity and to put good food in your mouth and to make conscious decisions of you know how you're going to feel after you eat that and do you really need it and um, and just to make sure that you're getting active because it's really difficult right especially at this time that's exactly right get up and go mm -hmm. move mm -hmm. two three one right five four three two one five four three two one <laughs> like launch cheating. yourself out of bed <laughs> I love that concept I mean, you know, it's winter in most of the country, and uh, the bed, like you referenced, is very cozy, so it's a little bit tougher to get up. But yes, definitely, it, it get up and launch yourself out of bed um, works on so many different levels, especially like uh, individuals that have arthritic joints, too. You need to get up and move. A sedentary lifestyle is not great. Um, your body will store fat if you're more sedentary mm -hmm. as opposed to when you're getting up and moving around. So it's really good for uh, decreasing um, diabetes because when you're moving you're burning calories and that's glucose. And it's good for uh, just bloodstream moving through your mm -hmm. veins and arteries so it's decreasing uh, the risk of elevated cholesterol levels as well. Yes. And not to mention if you work out. When you work out, you perspire, so that gets the heart rate up, it conditions your heart, it lowers blood pressure, and it's really quite refreshing to the skin too. It's a really great tip, Kimberly. And other, and also to get some accountability buddies, you know, to get so your girls or your guys and, that you work out with and get a buddy and to be accountable too because it's, you know, you're accountable to yourself every time you look in the mirror, but when you gotta show up for someone else, you know, you're, it's, it's a different story. So I always have my girls that I work out with and, you know, to be accountable to, to show up for, and they keep me on track. That's a really, really good point too, because that's what just about anything too, when you tell someone about a goal that you're about to achieve, mm -hmm. you're holding yourself accountable because every time you see that individual, guess what they're gonna ask you about? What you told them. Yeah. And so that's very important. And a buddy, you know, it's holding you accountable and the other person as well. So when you tag team, uh, it's really great. Uh, yes. You can do a number of things, uh, strength in numbers. So that's really good too. Absolutely. You got yeah. one more? Yeah, and well, and just to be positive, you know, and to stay positive, you know, you, happiness is a choice, and I choose it every single morning. Like I have to choose it, and you just reset when you're when you're feeling that disease or that, you know, um, you know, feeling just ugh. You know, you just have to say, okay, I'm choosing this cho this feeling, so I can choose differently. Choose again. That's really good mm -hmm. too. Uh, you have the power to make a difference, uh, not only in your life, but someone else's life. It's a conscious decision. And really to give someone um, a smile or, um, you know, now with the mask, it's hard to see the smile. So it's through your eyes, right? It's hope. And at the end of the day, that's what the world is missing is um, hope and love, definitely. Absolutely, and you know, be the difference, like you say, be it. That's right. Well, I really appreciate that. Kimberly, I do have a few more tips to uh, give out. It's ways to invest in yourself. So it's on the 
uh, boost your wealth side of things with mm -hmm. this segment. And uh, it's similar to some of the things that you were talking about, actually. And uh, watch less TV, um, visit educational sites, read books, um, save your money, invest in your money, mm -hmm. love yourself. What a great investment, right? When you love yourself, you're going to make better choices and decisions. Um, be productive. Learn something new, right? Uh, plan your day and week. Uh, some people are so spontaneous and it works for uh, some, uh, but others need more structure. So when you sit down and you plan, almost like meal prepping too, uh, mm -hmm. it saves you money and it saves you from grabbing something last minute that wouldn't be as beneficial for you as well. Uh, practice gratitude. Uh, measure your results, right? So you just can't do something and think, oh, mm, I did it. But measure it against something else. So it's almost like goal settings. Uh, exercise, eat healthy, uh, and wake up early, right? Yeah. So these and are your all. And plan, your planning. So I say it all the time. People don't um, pl plan to fail. They fail to plan. You know, so we have to have a plan. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't matter um, how old we get. Uh, you're never too old to learn. Uh, and these are helpful tips to just instill in everyday life so that, you know, you can hold yourself accountable uh, at the end of the day and be proud of some of the things that you achieve. And it's not always major accomplishments. It's some of the little things. Celebrate everything. That's exactly right. Celebrate, celebrate. Mm -hmm. Learn to live in the moment, in the present. Uh, and just know that your presence is greatly needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. Next week is coming up. We have uh, Dr. Green and uh, Sharjad Green. And she is a PharmD. Uh, she's a compounding pharmacist. And she is going to tell all of us women uh, about menopause, the types of supplements that we can take, why we're going through what we're going through, uh, and she's just a wealth of information. I can't wait uh, to have her on the show to talk about uh, menopause in women. That is coming up next week. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Dr. Nancy Knows Radio Talk Show. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next week. Optimal Health requires you to perform at your peak potential. Start today. Be the change you wish to see in the world. This was Dr. Nancy Knows. Thank you for connecting. We're waiting for you on our next broadcast here at EMR, Emotion Radio. Radio.